Hey there. I will now introduce you to another family of control structures in JavaScript, which are loops. All right, so when I first showed you the if else statement, I mentioned that it was one of many control structures that we have in JavaScript. So here are some more control structures, and these ones are loops. So loops are a very, very important aspect of any programming language in the world. So imagine that you have a very repetitive task. Instead of writing like 10 lines of code of the same code, you could just use a loop. And there are actually different types of loop in JavaScript, but let's start by taking a look at the simple for loop, which is probably the most used loop in JavaScript. Let's imagine that we want to print to the console the numbers from 0 to 9. How would we do that? We could write 10 times console log 0, then console.log1, all the way up to console.log9. But that would be a little bit boring and repetitive, right? So let's use a for loop. And it goes like this. For, and now we start with the initial value of a counter. And a counter is basically a variable that gets updated after each iteration of the loop. Usually in programming, we use a counter called i. So let's declare it here. So var i equals zero. And usually we start at zero. And in this most simple form, which is what we're going to do now, let's just keep it like that. So we start a loop with the counter variable i equal to zero. Okay, in the second part, we have a condition that is evaluated before each loop iteration. And this is meant to stop the loop at a certain condition. So let's say we want to print 10 numbers, like I was saying, from 0 to 9. So this means that we would want to run the loop until the i variable, so the counter, is 10. So let's say i less than 10. Okay, I will explain it in, gre in greater detail when we start using this in practice. And the third and last part of the for loop iteration is the update to the counter after each iteration. In the most simple way, we simply increase i. And I hope you remember this operator from one of the first lectures, this plus plus operator. What this does is the same thing as saying i equals i plus one, right? So this simply updates the counter after each iteration of the loop and adds one to the to the current value. Okay. So let's now print the number console.log. And instead of writing 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9, we simply write our counter variable, which is i. So let me print this and then explain what happens here behind the scenes. Okay, so this actually works, right? We have all the numbers from 0 all the way to 9. So what does our loop do? Once again, it starts at 0 and goes all the way up to 10. And after each iteration, it simply adds 1 to the current value. So let's start at the loop 0. We have i equal to 0. And then this condition is evaluated. So is i less than 10? And it's true. So we go to the next iteration, which is the first one. So we console log i, which is at this point 0, right? So we see 0 here. Then after that, it goes to this part and it updates the counter variable. So we're at 0 at this point, so 0 plus 1 is 1. And then it starts again. Next loop. So is i less than 10? So is 1 less than 10? And yes, of course it is. So we execute the next loop and now console log 1 because i is 1 at this point. And then once again we come here and then the counter variable gets updated to 2. And it goes all the way up to 9. So then console log of 9. And after this iteration, when we come here to the counter update, 9 plus 1 is 10. Okay, and then in the next loop, we come here to the condition and we have is 10 less than 10 and no it's not so this is false and as soon as this condition is false 
the loop stops and no more values will be printed here. So in order to understand it better, let me actually write it down here for you. So in the beginning, i is zero, right? Then the condition is true, then we print zero, then update i to one. And after that, so i is one, the condition is still true. So we print one, update i to two. And it goes on and on and on all the way to the end where i is nine. The condition is then still true, right? Because nine is still less than 10. So we print nine and update i to 10. So in the next round, i is now 10. So the condition is false and then end the loop. All right, so this is basically what happens in this for loop. Now, this isn't very useful, right? So let's now look at a more practical and useful way in which we usually use loops. Let's say we have once again an array with some names in it. So let's create this array. John, Jane, Mary, Mark, and Bob. All right, so we have five names here. And I'm sure that you remember that in order to read the values out of the array, we need their number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in this case. So imagine that we would have to print all of these five names in the console. We could, of course, write names 0 and names 1 and all the way to 4. Now, in this case, it wouldn't be so bad, but imagine we had 20 or 100 uh, elements in this array. It wouldn't be so great, right? So what we can do is, once again, you guess it, use the for array. All right, so we have four, and once again, we can say var i equal to zero, and we end when i is five, right? Because it has five elements, zero, one, two, three, four, and we still want to include number four, but number five, we don't want it anymore. So when i is five, we stop the loop. So now we can very simply print names i, because i is the counter, i is what is going to increase. All right, so we have the result from our previous loop and now the result from this loop. And here are the five, John, Jane, uh, Mary, Mark, and Bob. Now imagine that we wouldn't know the, the number of elements in the array. There's still a solution for that. And that is by using the length property of the array. So remember that the names or that the array in general have a couple of methods that we have already used like the pop, shift, unshift, and so on methods, but they also have this property. And this property is the length property, and this gives us the length of the array. It gives us the number of elements in the array. So let's check it out here, names dot length. So five elements, which is what we had here, right? We had the five, but we can simply say names dot length, which will give us five as well. Let's check this. And indeed, here we have our five results. And looping through arrays is actually one of the biggest use cases uh, in general for, for loops. This is something that we very commonly do. And now I just have a small challenge for you. Imagine that you wanted to print these, these elements of the array, but not in this normal order starting from zero to four, but the other way around, starting in four, 
and going all the way down to zero, so Bob, Mark, Mary, Jane, and John. So how would you do this? You can take a moment and pause the video and think about this, uh, how you would construct a for loop and then come back and see me posting the solution here. Okay, so just pause the video. Okay, so I hope you managed to make this work and in case you did not, then here goes the solution. So we still need a for loop, of course, but if we want to start at, at number four, then we need to define our variable as number four. And how do we do that? It's very simple. We once again use the length property, names dot length. But since we don't want five, but four, we need to subtract one. Okay, cool. So now we start with our counter variable at number four. And then here goes the ending condition, which we will leave for later. And in the end, we need to update the counter. And until now, we always increased the number by one. But since we want to go from four to zero, we now need to decrease it. So it's not I plus plus, but I minus minus, which is the same as writing I equals I minus one, right? So it's really the same as the plus plus operator, but for a subtraction. The condition that is evaluated before each loop is also pretty easy, right? Because what we want is to go all the way until the i is zero. So i needs to be larger than zero and actually not only larger, but also equal because we also want to include the first element which is John. All right, so let's think about this again. So we start at number four and we'll go all the way to zero because the condition is that I should be greater or equal to zero. So let's then log the names. And indeed, here we go. So Bob, Mark, Mary, Jane, and John. So in the last iteration, uh, I is zero, so we print John, which is names zero. And after that, the I counter gets updated, and then it's minus one, right? And minus one is of course not greater or equal to zero. So this evaluates to false, and therefore the for loop stops and this printing here stops. Okay, cool. So again, this is the most common use case for, for the for loop. So we start at zero and then uh, stop increasing. But of course we can do it the other way around. We just need to think a little bit about our counter values, how we want to update them and what should be our final condition. All right, so this is the for loop, but there are other loops in JavaScript and another popular one is called the while loop. And the while loop is pretty similar to the for loop, but the difference is that it only has the condition that is evaluated before each iteration. So if you want to do the same thing as we have here, we need to do it in a bit different way. So let me just put some comments here for you. For loops and then while loops. And I don't want to see this printing all the time, so let me comment it. So let's do the same thing as here. So print out these five elements of the array in the usual order. So remember, the while loop only has the condition that is evaluated before each loop. So what we can do here is names.length. So this will get evaluated. Now, if you want the counter and the counter update, we need to include them before and inside of the while loop. So if you want a counter, we need to put it right here before the loop starts. And in here we can then console log the usual way, saying names and I. And after that, we need to simply update the counter variable. All right. And maybe this is even easier to understand than the for loop because this is actually what also happens in the for loop. So first 
we define something, which is the counter, then while this condition holds true, we execute this. And we print, then we update the counter variable, and then it starts all over again. And to prove that to you, let me just reload it. And here we are, John, Jane, Mary, Mark, and Bob. And just to finish this lecture, uh, I want to show you two very important statements here for loops, which is break and continue. And put it simply, break is to, is to break out of a loop, so to finish a loop at a certain point, and continue is to quit the current iteration of the loop and continue with the next one. So let me just show you uh, two quick examples. And these actually work for all kinds of loops, like for loops and while loops as well. So let me make a very simple for loop here, just to print the numbers from 1 to 5. So var i equals 0, then i should be smaller than 6, or we could even say less or equal to 5, which is the exact same thing. And then we want to update our counter. And now we simply console.log i. And actually let me start at 1 here, so that I actually print the numbers from 1 to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now suppose that I wanted to stop this loop after 3, so only print 3 numbers. Now this isn't very practical in this case, but it's just to show you how it works, because this is useful in other situations and that we will see later in the course. So we could just have an if statement here and say that if i equals 3, then we want to break. All right. And what this loop will do, it will print 1, 2, and 3, but when it's 3, then this here Will become true so 3 will equal 3 and of course then it enters this part here and will break the loop all right so this only prints the numbers 1 2 and 3 and now something very similar which is the continue continue and this actually should be at the beginning of the loop, not at the end, because continue is actually what happens at the end of a loop, right? So we hit the end of the loop and then we go to the next iteration, which is exactly what continue does. So what we expect to happen now is to print 1, 2, and then when i is 3, then 3 equals 3, so it's true, and then we continue. So number 3 will not be printed because we will go to the next iteration of the loop right after this and skip this console log here. So the number 3 will not be printed, but number 4 and 5 will. So let me show it to you. And here we go. So 1, 2, 4 get skipped, and number 4 and number 5 are printed indeed. All right, so these are just some very basic examples, not really some real-world applications, but it's just to make you familiar with these very important statements uh, that we have for loops. All right, and this actually closes up the fundamentals that I wanted to show you in this introductory JavaScript section. And we've covered a lot of stuff, a lot of material, and I'm sure that you learned a lot already. So congratulations for that. It's great that you're still with me. And so now let's just move on to our next coding challenge so that you can actually apply what you've learned so far in another exercise that I have for you. Okay, so I'm waiting for you in the next lecture. And once again, congratulations for making it this far.